Can y'all hear? What's up? What's up? Chris, what's up, man? The Dean Princess, what's up? Joe, hello, what's up? Hey, Kim. <laughs> can y'all hear? Chris Holmes, can you hear me now? Now I'm on here, dude. <laughs> I wasn't trying to message you, bro. How you doing, H. Woods? So that's your Twitter handle. All right. Yeah, yeah. The cam quality on point today. Yeah, yeah. I got it a little bit closer. I, I, I didn't know I was messing with your emotions like that, though, uh, Chris. <laughs> Maceo, what's happening? Hey, if you guys can share this scope... With your, with your Twitter friends or other Facebook friends, that would be great because I'm going to uh, be talking about uh, a few things um, that I want to make sure that everyone, I guess, understands. Have you heard of GS16? If so, what's your thought? I haven't yet. Um, I haven't yet. I, I, I do plan on it. Um, um, I know GS is here in Houston, but uh, he said it's so rare I ever catch anyone as they broadcast. Yeah, man. I try... I'm trying to do this more, Chris, because I know people, you know, they, when you hear people or when you read comments and tweets, you don't really have opportunity to um, hear the spirit or hear the, um, you know, tone of what a person says. So uh, I've been trying to um, do, I, I, I do, actually I do, Redeem, actually, I, I, I speak on eschatology, um, I'm, I'm actually doing it. I'm doing a, um, a series. This would be our third part, uh, three-part series uh, this Sunday on, uh, on on Israel and the church. We're going through the book of Romans right now. Right now we're in chapter 11. We're going to be finishing up on chapter 11 uh, this Sunday, Lord willing. So if you want to check out uh, my uh, website or if you want to go on my uh, page on Sermon Audio, just go to sermonaudio.com forward slash his word, his way. And... Um, it's called, Has God Reneged on His Promise to Israel? Has God Reneged on His Promises to Israel? And so I'm going through that right now. Uh, but I am dispensational, and if you want to know uh, my view on it on it without, you know, giving it a spoiler alert, I guess you, you say. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, um, like I say, yeah, you can go, you can either go on my Facebook page, and I have not posted there, but or you can just go to sermonaudio.com, uh, for us, last, his word is way. Hey, dear Sharon, if you can, if you can post the link up for, uh, uh, just put it up on, uh, just put it up on the, uh, on, on the page here, on Periscope, in case she wants to go to it. Again, it's uh, sermonaudio.com forward slash his word, his way. And uh, it'll be the first two uh, links there that you'll see on the, uh, on, on the site there. But, uh, but yeah, but I'm dispensation. I believe in, um, yeah, but you got to put the forward slash in this, this sermon audio. It's sermon audio, dear. For being so quick with the fingers. <laughs> Sermonaudio.com forward slash his word, his way. Uh, this artist here that I'm playing is my brother. Good dude. His name is Jay Crumb. If you don't have this album, get that. It's called Black Sheep. That's it. Sermonaudio.com forward slash his word, his way. Yep. And it'll take you directly there. All of our sermons, recent sermons are there. Or if you want to uh, check out past sermons back in 2009, you can go there and uh, you can go to um, uh, hiswordisway.org and you can check out the, uh, the website and all of our old stuff there. All right. So anyway, yeah, but that was that was uh, my brother Jay Crumb. His album is called uh, Black Sheep. You can get that. There's a few albums that are out. And I'm going to be talking about one of them later today and share my thoughts about uh, Dream Junkies new album uh, called um, Good Religion. So I'll, I'll share my share my thoughts on that. What's up? How you doing, Duelist on the Shame? Good afternoon. How you doing, sister? From California, I believe, right? All right. All right. Anyway, I'm um, glad to have you guys here. I'm going to try to keep this thing. <sighs> and I know preachers say this all the time. I know we do. I know we do. Um, but I'm going to try to keep this thing very... Um, brief as much as possible. I know some of y'all are saying, "Yeah, right." Well, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm going to try. All right, I'm going to try to stay on, stay on task and stay focused to what uh, I want to talk about uh, today, and uh, let you guys, you know, 
Um, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, Chris, I know, man. So look, pray, pray my, pray my strength in the Lord. All right. <laughs> but let's jump right into it. Um, how many of you guys had an opportunity to hear? Um, yeah, solution. Start closing now. I know, huh? <laughs> um, how many of you guys had a chance to read the uh, the article uh, from CHH today on uh, the uh, Christian rapper Dayton? Uh, D a t i n. Uh, he's with God over money, and actually, he he and I had a little brief, uh, just very brief conversation on Twitter. I had tagged him on Twitter, letting him know that I'm going to be talking about, uh, you know, his uh, his interview that he had on on. Uh, yeah, well, check check it out, Valerie. Check it out. Um, it's on it's on chh today. Just go to chhtoday.com, and you can read the article there. Actually, I'm, I have it here because I wanted to kind of like read some high points and highlights of it. But it says, it's titled, Dayton Takes Aim at Divisive Christians on the Roar. His album is called The Roar. I would encourage you guys to get that album. It is a very good album, gospel-centered, uh, very real album. Uh, I, I, I like the album. It's a very, very good album. Um, I would encourage you to get it and check it out for yourself. Uh, very good artist and a uh, very good brother in the Lord. So, but he, had, he was interviewed, uh, I believe, on the 2nd, on the 2nd. And um, um, it was discussing uh, divisive Christians or divisiveness uh, in the body of Christ. And I'll be the first one to tell you, to be the first one to say that there is division in the body of Christ. Um, some necessary, some unnecessary. Uh, and, and the reason why I'm saying that is because, what's up, Fresh Coast? I, I, I see you, boy. I see you, boy. <laughs> what's up, Vision? Um, there is divisiveness in the church. Um, and there is division in the church that can be either necessary or unnecessary. The reason why I'm saying that is because of this. And this is in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 19. Paul said that there must be factions or divisions or heresies among you. Why? So that those who are approved may be made known among you. So it does. sometimes divisions are, are helpful. Sometimes divisions are, are needed and necessary to weed out the falsehood, to weed out the wolves, to weed out the bad uh, uh, seeds that may be uh, in the church. So I, I'm not I'm not against division when it's for the purpose and unity of the church. Some things we need to divide over because if we don't divide, being unified in error does not help anyone. There there must be factions, Paul says, and and there must be divisions for the case or for the sake of unity, so that there won't be unnecessary confusion, so there won't be unnecessary bickering and fighting. Um, but and, and this article, um, Dayton was interviewed and it was asked a question regarding divisiveness and division uh, in, the, uh, in the church. And so it was regarding Calvinists. Now, I'll be the first one to tell you regarding my theological stance or slant, uh, I am a Calvinist. Now, I don't, I don't, you don't see a C on my chest and I ain't throwing up C signs and say, I'm a Calvinist, I'm a Calvinist, respect my, respect my, no, I'm not doing all that, I'm not doing all that, okay? That's unnecessary. That's childish. That's what Paul goes against in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's what he's talking about when we are worshiping man, when we are worshiping, you know, a, a, a theology instead of the God who gave us, you know what I'm saying, the, the theology that we are to understand and to, and to love. And all theology is the study of God. That's all it is. It's just the study of God. Um, but... It was regarding it was regarding Calvinism. It was regarding uh, those who are in uh, in the movement, or I, would, I wouldn't even want to say movement, but under the theology of Calvinism. Because I'll say this: that Calvinism is not a religion, and I, I want people to understand that that Calvinism is not a religion. Calvin, Calvinism is a belief system that comes from and stems from the biblical teachings regarding what we believe and see is taught in Scripture. And, and John Calvin was not the one who invented Calvinism. So I want that I want to clearly uh, uh, dispel that as well. Yes, I do agree with all the Tudor points, including total depravity. I believe I, I, I'm a five pointer all the way unashamed through and through. I make no qualms about that. I'm not ashamed to say that. Uh, I don't say it pridefully. I'm just saying that's what I believe. If you hear my sermons and if I'm going through Romans, uh, Romans 9 through 11, you're going to hear the doctrines of grace preached and taught throughout that text and throughout those chapters. Bottom line, anything that I preach that has anything to do with that, you're going to hear the doctrines of grace being taught. If it's in there, I'm going to preach it. I hold to expository preaching and teaching. Therefore, I, I say what the Word of God says. All right? 
Um, so let me just read the question so that way I want to get everyone's you know opinions regarding this because what I did was I had posted the, the article and I asked the question I said man are, are, are all Calvinists that bad? I said I mean it's, it's all Calvinists that bad to where the label or the I guess you can say the um, characterization is um, is leveled against Calvinists as being arrogant. I've heard people say that. I have a good friend and brother, Fred Price Jr., man. That's my brother. I love him to death. And he said, man, until he had met me, mm-hmm. that he didn't. He he thought that all Calvinists were were like that. And uh, and I said, man, there, there there are there are more of us than what than what you may realize. And I have to say, I'm not here to apologize for what other people do. I believe it's an individual thing. I believe it's an individual situation that 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 deserves uh, attention. Um, that's like me apologizing for every black person uh, that may have done something because of what one one black person did. So I call people who make these statements or who basically have had um, bad experiences with Calvinists. These people probably are fresh out of the womb of the Internet Calvinist. What do I mean by that? I mean, these people probably just read something on the doctrines of grace or read something about Calvinism, have not really studied the history uh, of, of, of Calvinism. And now they come right out the out the womb of the Internet, ready to blast anyone that does not hold to the five points. So or or, 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 or cage stage cats. Yeah. So I. I uh, I got you, bro. I got you. I got you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that you did that. I'm not saying that you did that. But I want to. I want to clarify some things because I know. I know that. That's the stigma, and sometimes the unfortunate misrepresentation uh, regarding Calvinism. Matter of fact, and I'm glad Dayton is on the. Uh, is, is in the scope because I told him I was going to be t- discussing this as well, um, and I believe that Dayton will probably, like you said in his in his in the article, that he he would hold more to reformed to reform view. Of, of theology regarding salvation, regarding Calvinism, uh, anyway. So, um, but I do believe that there needs to be a conversation regarding this because, mm-hmm. unfortunately, a lot of people would say or make blanket statements regarding Calvinists. And really, to be honest with you, really to be honest with you, um, that's hyper Calvinist. Most hyper Calvinists basically have that stance and have that view and. All Calvinists are lumped into a category that's unfair. That's unfair. Um, because true historic Calvinists believe uh, that there are Arminians. I mean, my goodness. Look, George Whitfield and Wesley, they were, you had, Whitfield was a, a, a Calvinist. Wesley was an Arminian. They had their beefs, they had their battles, and made public statements, but they were, they considered each other brothers in Christ. You see what I'm saying? So, um, so, so I, I believe that there needs to be a qualified that there needs to be a understanding regarding um, those who hold to the five points, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, of, of Calvinism. And I will say this, because I hear people say, well, I, I don't want to be called a Calvinist. Well, see, he, here's, here's a point that I'm trying to make here. I have no problem with someone saying that they're a Calvinist, that they're saying it with the, with the humble heart and the right spirit. I believe that God coexists and he is revealed in three co-equal persons. One being three persons. What does that make me? That makes me a Trinitarian. I'm not going to walk around and say, well, I, I, I don't want to be called a Trinitarian. That's fine. You can call me a Trinitarian. That's fine. They, they, Christians, true born again believers, are Trinitarian, and that's okay. That should be okay. That should be okay for us to say, okay, look, I, you know, I, I hold to uh, credo baptism. I hold to that believers must confess Jesus Christ as Lord, must be saved before they are baptized. I am not a pedo baptist. I don't believe in infant baptism. I believe that Christians should be baptized. I don't believe that babies should be baptized. I don't believe in sprinkling anything unless I'm sprinkling some uh, peanuts and some caramel on my ice cream. That's the only thing I'm going to sprinkle. But I'm not going to sprinkle any water on any baby. I'm not going to sprinkle any water on any adult person that professes to know Christ as Lord. They're going to get dipped. They're going to get dumped. Okay? So I will be qualified and classified as a Baptist. You see what I'm saying? So 
Let me get to my point on this. So anyway, in the article, um, Dayton was asked a question, I believe, uh, and quote and, and me if I'm wrong. But anyway, um, mm -hmm. it says, I asked a New Jersey native a few questions about it, and he was surprised, and I was, it was surprised, rather, uh, at, by the level of depth that he responded with. Here's a transcript of that exchange. He says, the song is a strong call for unity. This is the question. Did a personal experience of division from your walk motivate you uh, to put this out there? Or what specifically grieved you and convict, or convicted you that this needed to be heard? And so I'm, I'm quoting Dayton now in the, in the article. He said, just as of recently, recently, I've been dealing with a lot of Calvinists and reform cats. Now, though I may lean toward reform beliefs, it's more, it's more case by case with me. And I agree with him. It should be case by case. But probably 95% of what I believe would be in the reform lane. My dealings with a lot of Calvinists and reform cats have, have kind of been a turnoff for me. Not all. He says, I know for some, I know some, some of the best dudes I know are some reform cats. But just for the most part of them, it's just been how they've turned Calvinism into another religion. They've almost uh, no different from Jehovah's Witnesses saying or Mormons. Like if you don't subscribe to these beliefs, you're not saved. And that's kind of what it's turned into. If you don't believe these things, you don't believe the doctrine of election. If you, if you believe in the gifts of the spirit, if you believe X, Y, Z, if you believe in tongues, you're not saved. If you believe you found God, you're still in glory from God, so you're not saved. Now, end quote, I'll just stop right there. Here's what I will say. Most of what he is saying, I, I hear him and I would agree with, with what he's saying for the most part and understand the spirit of what he's saying. But I would probably also add with this, that most of these people who will say this, they will say that because a person does not uh, agree with the doctrine of election or does, does not agree with the reform position regarding uh, free will, they don't understand historical Calvinism. And these are the cage stage, fresh out of the internet womb cat Calvinists. That they need to be uh, set, set aside and say, hey man, let's, let's discuss what you're talking about here. Because I know a lot of our men, just like what Dayton said in this article, that are believers, that love Jesus Christ, that, that are Born again, spirit filled believers that love God just like you and I do. We just differ on soteriology. Does not mean that we don't we deny justification by faith alone, Christ alone. We hold to those things by grace alone. To the glory of God alone. Now, I will say this, I will say this. That and I've had I've had a debate, I think two years ago on a radio show, uh, with the brother who's an Arminian, and had said basically. Uh, and he, he's an Arminian, and we disagree. We disagree on the doctrines of grace. He holds to free will. Well, my thing is man's will is only free as his nature. And since all men are born in sin, all men have fallen and have rebelled against the, the holiness of God, we are all slaves of sin, and God himself must make us free. Now, some people will say, you know, what's the big deal? I would say the glory of God is the big deal for me. I believe if you hold to free will, well, I believe if you believe that you are the final determiner of your salvation, then that does rob God of his glory. Does that mean that you're not a Christian? No, that does not mean that. What that does mean to me, from what I see, when I read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29, that by that no man should boast before God, verse 30 says, but by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus. If God says by his doing, you and I are in Christ Jesus, then there is no room for man's quote-unquote free will to be the final determiner for his salvation. So that means God has to be the author and finisher of my faith. Now, my will is only as free as my nature is. Here's what I'm saying about that. It does not mean that I don't make a choice, but my choice has, has to be connected to my nature. And this is why Paul says that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. Well, how do we have to be? How can we be a new creation in Christ Jesus? God has to change our nature, the new birth, right? So it means that God has to change this heart of stone into hearts of flesh. But I may have a brother that would agree, but will still say, "Well, you know what? I still believe that man has free will. That God is not going to violate man's will." Well, no, it's not about violating any will. I will, we, listen. We make a choice. Listen, we make a choice. But that choice is based upon God choosing us first. Remember what Jesus told the disciples? He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you to be disciples, my disciples. So now, so my will is only as free as my nature. So if my nature is corrupt, if my nature is rebellious, if my nature is, 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 hate, is a hater of God, then 
that means that man has to be changed. And since man can't change himself, and since, like the prophet says, uh, uh, a leopard can't change his spots, an Ethiopian can't change his skin color, so neither can you and I, who are prone and who are accustomed to do evil. The heart of man is evil. That's what we are. We are evil from the core. God has to change us. So I would say that Armenians rob God of his glory when it comes to man being the final determiner, but it does not mean that I would say that they're not Christians. I would, I would never say that by God's grace. So I would disagree with any person that would say, well, they're not Christians because, you know, they're robbing God of his glory. Listen, we rob God of God's glory all the time when we sin. We misrepresent him when we disobey him. We Listen, we carry the name of Christ everywhere we go. So I believe that regeneration, being born again, precedes faith. I believe that I must be born again in order to believe. You follow me? That's what that's what that's what John three says. It says, unless you are born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. So I, I hold to the reform view of that. But I know some people don't. And that's OK. That's OK. They're still my brother and sister in Christ. I believe that they're wrong, just like they believe that I'm wrong. OK, we'll find out who's right when we get to glory. That's fine. But I can still fellowship with my brother and sister. I can still. Uh, 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 lock arms with them as long as they hold to the essentials. They have to hold to the essentials of the faith. They have to hold to sound teaching when it comes to scripture alone. Salvation by grace through faith alone. Christ alone. Dr. Michael Brown has been a guest on my show. He is an avid Arminian and a charismatic tongue speaker. That's my brother. One of the greatest, listen, one of the, one of the greatest examples I've seen this side of heaven of two people who vehemently disagree and have had passionate debates regarding Arminianism and Calvinism has been Dr. Michael Brown and Dr. James White. That, that for me, was a game changer, man. I mean, that was, and, 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 and James White has been on Dr. Michael Brown's show and has hosted his show in, in Dr. Brown's absence. Yeah, and Dr. Brown was a former Calvinist, which I don't understand how you'd be, but anyway. So, that's my point. So, I would agree. I would agree with what Dayton is saying regarding this. Anybody that says that, you know, you have to be a Calvinist, and if you're not a Calvinist, you're not saved, they, they don't understand, man. They, they don't understand <laughs> what they're talking about, and those are the ones that are fresh out the internet womb. They're fresh out the internet womb. They, they're fresh out the saying stuff that they don't understand. Most of these people probably are embracing hyper-Calvinism hyper and they just understand what they're embracing because historical Calvinism does not believe nor teach that. And I agree, no one's theology is perfect. Now, I will say this, I believe that Calvinism, in my view, and what I see in Scripture, holds consistently, and I'm talking about when it comes to soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation. I believe, I've been saved for 16 years, I've been saved for 16 years, um, I believe that Calvinism is the best representation and has the cons a more consistent biblical view regarding man, sin, salvation, the glory of God. I believe that. I, I just see that. And again, John Calvin didn't invent this. Christ Jesus did. Okay? When I read John 6.44, I don't see John Calvin said anything. I see Jesus Christ saying that. Okay? So anyway, um... Was another one, and, I, and there's another. Here's another question there. I'm glad that Dayton answered. Um, he, the question was: You rap about the body being divided by denominations. Is it your opinion that the, that denominations should be done away with cause division? And I, I'm glad that Dayton answered this question. I hear a lot of people will say, "Wait, well, we need to do away with denominations. We need to do, listen. Why? Why would I do away with denominations? Why? Why, why do I do away with denominations? It's through denominations that help us to understand and here's my point that bring about the best unity because again we don't all have it right so i'd rather say hey we may not agree here and if it's going to be best for the for the body of christ to to grow and for us to serve one another better that we do you know go this way and go that way we're still brothers in christ listen i got family that i don't uh hang around with but they're still my family they're still my family we just may not agree on certain things, but that's still my brother, that's still my sister. But most importantly, those of us who name the name of Jesus Christ, listen, my hand is not my foot. 
but it's still a part of the body. My eye is not my nose. It's still a part of the body. Different function. Still part of one body. Different functions. One body. So he actually answered the question. They, answered, they, they didn't answer the question and said, no, I don't believe denomination should be done away with. I'm glad he said that. I'm glad he said that because there's not going to be a one universal church, universal body that we will see this side of heaven until we get to heaven. Does that make sense? I hope it does. But we are still one in Christ. A person who speaks in tongues is still my brother. A person who believes in infant baptism, still my brother. A person who is a uh, covenant theologian or replacement theologian, still my brother. Still my brother. And I know people disagree with me. I'm a dispensationalist. I'm a pre-trib dispensationalist. I believe that Israel and the church are separate entities. And I have people that disagree with me. But I hope they would consider me as their brother. You feel me? Barani, she's an Amir. Bless her heart. Let's just, everybody touch the screen right now. Just touch, 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 touch Barani right now. Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, but no, so that's what I'm saying. So, and, and that's good. That's cool. I'm good with that. He said that no, I don't believe that denomination should be should be done away with. See, my man Reed B Versus, who don't let me be on his album, but that's okay. He's Amil. Bless his heart too, two times. But anyway, um, he said, yeah, I don't believe that denomination should be done away with. I just think that there needs to be more of an understanding for other denominations. That's key. That's key. I can listen, I can understand you, and you can understand me. And we should be able to, to agree, lovingly disagree, and still be cool. Still be cool. That's, I believe that's maturity. I, I believe that's maturity. Some people say there's seven. Some people say that there's five. All depends. One is Pentecostals? Nah, not, not Christian. Not Christian. As a matter of fact, go to uh, Blog Talk Radio and, all right, fine, read. You're not an I meal. What, then what are you? What, what are you, boy? I'm just playing with you. But, um. Uh, Go to go to Blog Talk Radio and um, pull up G220, G220. And there was a show that I did with uh, Ricky Gantz regarding uh, oneness Pentecostalism. And actually, there was a oneness that came on the show that called the show. He called the show. Um, so anyway, so you can check that out on, on, online there. What else, what else, what else? Dayton also said this. He said, well, he said, I would like to see more of that. And this is in context of what he was talking about. Um, regarding uh, different different views regarding charismatics things like that he said I would love to see or like to see more of that not that I'm the standard but you know I would like to see cats get along like that instead of writing them off like well you don't believe this so you're not saved and that's immaturity that's his bottom line immaturity people need to grow up because then if that's the case they can volley that same comment back to you and to me and say okay well if you don't believe what I believe you're not saved you see how silly and how foolish that, that sounds but I, I do believe that, really, to be honest with you, a lot of these people, like I said, are either new to the doctrines of grace and our Calvinism, or they are embracing hyper-Calvinists and don't understand what they are talking about. That, that is what I, I, just, I just don't see how any, any historical Reformed Calvinist would say something like this and act as if that's okay to say. N Spurgeon never said that. Calvin never said that about anyone that holds to a different view. And people try to take Spurgeon's writings and try to turn them on his head and think that he was against Arminians mm -hmm. and think that Arminians were not saved. He never said that. Never said that. So hopefully that that you guys will will uh, you know get some understanding and insight on that. That I'm like, but but are all Calvinists like this? No. No, all Calvinists are not like that, and, I, and that's not the spirit of what Dayton is saying, but I wanted to kind of like add uh, that on the uh, other side. Remember the other night, the scales, brother, balance? I'm not understanding what you're saying on that. Re reset your point. Um, so anyway, yeah, so check out the article. It's called Dayton Takes Aim at Divisive Christians on the Roar, and, it, and it's by CHH uh, Today, okay? It's by CHH Today. Uh, 4147, wait till I see you this Sunday. That's all, I'm, that's all I'm gonna say about you. <laughs> that's my sister, forty-one, forty-seven. Y'all, y'all don't jump on her. She, she trying to make it into the kingdom, y'all. Bless her heart. All right. Anyway, um, so yeah, so check out the article. Get the uh, get um, 
uh, Dayton's album um, called uh, The Roar. It's a, like I can say it's a very good album. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll like it. Also, um, uh, check out, again, like I mentioned earlier, Black Sheep by, uh, by J. Crum. Uh, is this man? There's a few other. There's a few artists out there, man. That that we are really uh, are, are sleeping on, really. That are really are out there doing the work, and um, and they're not trying to do it for fame. They're not trying to do it for recognition. Bro, Kirk Kennedy. Come on, what? Kirk Kennedy? Chapters one, two, and three. Psh, if you don't have that, you need to repent. You need to come to the Periscope altar right now. We have we have people right now ready to lay hands on you for you to go ahead and repent and just turn. From your wicked ways. All right. If you don't have Kirk Kennedy's man, just just stop it. Just just stop it. All right. Here's here's the other part that I want to discuss because I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, all right. <sighs> How can I say this? How can I say this? Let me say it the way I need to say it. Dream Junkies has uh, has a new album out um, called Good Religion. Uh, it dropped uh, today. Uh, I've I've heard it like four times. Yeah, I got Periscope all to work. Ain't that something? I'm blowing up. <laughs> um, they have an album out called Good Religion. Um, and like I said, I heard it about four times. And Because uh, you know how you may hear something the first time and you don't really hear everything that you want to hear? So I said, okay, well, let, me, let, me, let me check it out again. And let me check it out again. Let me check it out again. Um, let me say this. Let me just say this. Because I, I want to be fair. I want to be objective, but most importantly, I want to be biblical. All right? Now, Seiko, what's your thoughts about the Dream Junkies? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, I'll say this. Sonically, mm -hmm. production-wise, lyrically, psh, I mean, it's, it's Tylenol. It's Tylenol. It's NyQuil. It's, it's, it's sick. It, it really is. It's... it's 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 good, sonically it's good, lyrically it's good, production quality is is good. It's called good religion. Biblically, um, yeah, uh, I can't, I can't. And here's why. Here, here's why. Here's why. Now, does it does it is it a Christian album? Is it a Christian album? I, 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 can't, I can't call it a Christian album. I can't call it a Christian album because I, I can't call it a Christian album. It doesn't mean that they're not Christian. That may be a debate for another time. But I'm talking about the album as a whole. Um, there's, there's some Christian themes there. I, you know, when I, heard, uh, when I heard I Got the Juice, I, 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 I heard some, I heard, I heard some overtones, you know, in that, but, but I, I don't, I don't, I can't say, I couldn't, I couldn't classify that album as a Christian uh, gospel album. I, I can't, I can't, I can't say that. Therefore, I cannot, I cannot endorse that album as being a Christian album. Uh, I can endorse it as being a good secular album. And that may be offensive to some, but I, I, I want to be, I'm trying to be balanced. I'm trying to be fair. Um... I, I when I when I looked at the the the, the you know, when I heard the music and I heard the songs I mean I, I just you got you had Murs you had you had Murs on the album fresh I, I got you bro I'm not I, listen I'm not I'm I'm trying to be fair with this joint I really am trying to be fair with it because I can't endorse it I, I can't I cannot endorse the album uh, because you have Murs on the album. And if you if you know anything about or anything about Murs, he should have never been on the album. He she should have never ever been on the album. Um, I probably would have given it more leeway and more you know I would say more grace if you will. I'm trying to be gracious now, but I can't I can't endorse it. I can't endorse it now. Now Murs didn't curse on the album. I don't see, no, it, it doesn't lead you to Christ. No, it doesn't. And let me say this also. Let me say this also. Music was never intended to lead us to Christ. Music is intended for us to worship God and to edify and encourage the body. That's technically the biblical reason and purpose for music. So artists, musicians, if you are doing music to win the lost, you need to change your mission statement. You need to change it. 
Because God never used, listen, God never used music to win sinners. Never. You won't find that in Scripture. Never, ever, 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 ever. 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 Music is for the purpose of exalting God and edifying the body. That is it. Now, doesn't mean that God can't, but we're not talking about the ability of God. What we're talking about is the prescriptive will of God. What has God said he wants us to do? He tells us to preach the word. He tells us to use preachers to preach the word. How can they hear without a preacher? He didn't say, how can they hear without a rapper? He didn't say, how can they hear without a, without a, without a, a hot 116 or a hot 16? How can they hear without a dope beat? How can they hear without scratching and cutting? He didn't say that. He said, how can they hear without a preacher and how can they preach unless he be sent? Okay, now, so stop using music as your tool to try to win the loss. Stop being lazy and start being a preacher of the gospel. Okay, that's what God has called all of us to do. Do the work of an evangelist. So should preachers, so preachers should not sing? Well, I ain't with hooping, so please don't ask me that question. Please don't ask me that question. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the bar? <laughs> Boy, you crazy. Okay, so I cannot endorse Dream Junkie's new album. Um, um, I would disqualify. I would disqualify and classify it as a as a, a good secular album. I mean, um, you want to ride along to it? That's fine. Now, the, again, the music is. I mean, the beats is dope. I, I listen. I can't even trip on that. I can't. I can't even trip on that. I'm not. I'm not going to hate on them on that. I'm not going to do that. How do I feel about John Piper endorsing the crate? Uh, John Piper may want to repent and may want to retract this statement like he should retract it about Driscoll. Um, so anyway, let me let me get back to this this album here because I want you to I want you guys to understand I want to come with this thing. Uh, <laughs> no, that wasn't Miles Davis, man. That wasn't Miles Davis. That was Miles Davis. Um, but I want I want I want you to understand that we need to be biblical in what we present. Period. What do you say? To those who say hip hop can't be used in Christianity, I would say Amen. I mean, what is hip hop about? Can God use? I mean, listen again. It's not about what can God use. God used the donkey. God used sheetrock to write on the wall. That's that's not about the issue. God can. What has He prescribed? I think pragmatism is going to be Christianity's death nail. If we don't stop calling sin what it is, we need to say, okay, this is what God says. Anything else less than that or more than that is a violation of his word. So, um, Good Religion is the name of the album from Dream Junkies. came out uh, today. Uh, it's a song called I Got the Juice. I, when I talked with Ruslan about this, you know, I had asked him because I, I saw the video on, um, on YouTube. And I, you know, and, and listen, I may not be the sharpest pencil in the box, but, you know, and I know there always are messages behind things that we say and do, but some things should be clear. So when you say, I got the juice, what do you mean I got the juice? You know, what, what, what does that mean? And when I, when I think I got the juice, I'm thinking about Tupac juice, the movie juice. I'm thinking about, okay, what, what do you have the juice with and, 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 and for whose purpose? What, what, what is it about? Okay. Um, so he explained the concept of it, you know, I, 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 and, I, and I asked him, I said, well, do you not, I said, is it possible that this can come across as braggadocious? Because what do you have the juice about? Whose respect are you trying to get? God never told us to get the respect of the world. He never told us to get the respect of the church. Never, ever, ever, ever. Yes, I did see the video. Um, and so again, I'm, I'm not here to attack anybody. I'm just, I'm just saying... We need to have a biblical worldview when we do music, biblical worldview when we do any type of ministry, especially when it goes out public. OK, um, so I had asked the question regarding that, you know, um, it can come across as being braggadocious. It can come across as. And when I hear this, let me, let me tell you also this. Stop saying swag. Just stop it. Will you please stop saying that you have swag or juice or you just stop. That that's that's that, that that is so, that is so, Second Timothy three. Mm -hmm. God tells us in the last days people are going to be talking about that they have swag. He calls them braggers. Just stop. 
You don't have any swag. You don't have nothing. You are, listen, we are clay pots. We are baked dirt. We are nothing. That's what we are. We're nothing. So what are we, what are we trying to get juice about? Juice on what? 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 So I, I think that we need to have an understanding that when we say this kind of stuff, it can send the wrong message, y'all. It can send the wrong message with that. Now, here's a, here's a song called Left Coast. Here's where I'm going to hang this, the rest of this scope at because <sighs> West Coast, I mean, excuse me, Left Coast, excuse me, Left Coast, Left Coast. It just sounds to me that it's like throwing up, I mean, you, you, Why, why, why do we have to talk about where we're from in, in our albums? I, 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 I mean, I, I don't understand it. I just, I don't understand it. I don't. So, <sighs> Left Coast featuring MERS. Yeah, because that's what the world does. We we don't we don't claim anything but Christ. Paul says, "Listen, it's not about me. We preach Christ. We don't preach our set. We preach Christ. We don't preach the culture. We preach Christ and Him crucified." In fact, Paul says that I came to know nothing else other than Christ. That's it. I don't want to know nothing else. He said, "I, I listen." I have been crucified to the world, and the world has been crucified to me. The world does not have a dominating effect on me because I have died. I've died. So it should never be about you know where you're from and all this kind of stuff. And I understand. I mean, listen, and I'm not trying to be legalistic here. I'm just saying that we need to be very careful when you're doing a song about where you're from. And I'm, I'm saying to all of us. I think it needs to be a part of your testimony if that's how you're using it. I, I would agree with that, Double Edge. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. But when you basically just, you know, throwing up your set, throwing up this and throwing up... No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's the old man. That it has nothing to do with the new man. People who know me know I'm from the D. They know I'm from Detroit. They know that. They know, they know who I represent and they know who, I'm, who, who I, you know, who I, you know... Uh, who I love. I, I love my hometown, but I'm not going to be, you know, it just, we need to be careful with that. That's all I'm saying. We need to be careful with that. Anyway, so Merz is on the song Left Coast. I believe that he, they should not have had him on, but bottom line, any unsaved artist has no business being on a Christian album. Period. Because it violates 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. Period. You cannot justify this you cannot justify this you cannot make this walk on all fours because it has no legs to walk god says clearly we are to be holy we're to be set apart is that not what holiness means to be set apart is not what consecration means to be set apart so what are we being set apart from we keep bringing what we're supposed to be set apart from back in i don't get it our music is supposed to be christian it's supposed to represent and reflect christ that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. If it's not representing Christ, if it's not exalting the kingdom of God, then what you and I are doing is offering strange fire. And we want God to accept it. He's not going to accept that. He is not going to accept that. I don't care how good it sounds. So you put an artist who's not a believer. If you think Murs is a Christian, then you need to check your salvation. You need to check, listen, you need to check your salvation at the door because you may have lost it somewhere back there. Murs is no more saved than Satan's sister is. Let me read a bio of this man, Murs. His name is actually Nick Carter, better known by a stage name, Murs. Now, you want to know what the word Murs means? Do you want to know what the word Murs means? I probably don't even know. I, I didn't know what his name meant either until, until today. He has, there's two definitions what his name can go by. First definition could be MERS stands for making the universe recognize and submit or making underground raw S-H-I-T. Which one you think? Which one you think? 
his name represents. I'll probably say the latter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, here's a little bit more information that we know about Mr. Mers here. Um, of course, back in 2014, uh, he signed to Tech 9. You know who Tech 9 is? <laughs> Tech 9. He signed to Tech 9's uh, label, Strange Music. Also, Mr. Mers is married with two children. He is an advocate, an advocate for gay rights, LGBT. He's an advocate for gay rights. The video for his song Animal Style features his character kissing another man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just out. Why would a Christian group endorse and put a person who endorses the LGBT on their album and think that the impressionable, the naive, the silly, the gullible, the dumb... Well, not out of curiosity, say, man, if Merz is on this album, let me check out this cat stuff and see what he's talking about. Well, if you want to know what Mr. Merz has produced and what he has out, I can tell you what Mr. Merz has out. His latest stuff. Oh, my goodness. Do we think that maybe he saved? Do we think that he has turned to Christ? He has an album out in his recent album, which is last year, called Have a Nice Life. Have a Nice Life. Uh, in, in this song, uh, in this album uh, called "Have a Nice Life," he has a a song. You're gonna love this one. This is a this is a top charter. This is a top charter. The song on one of his uh, on, on his album is called "Wait for It." Drum roll, please. P U S S Y and pizza. Mmm. Great combination, huh? He has a song called P-U-S-S-Y and Peace. And let me just read to you uh, some of these dope lyrics, some of these, some of these great verses from Mr. Murs that we have now as Christian, Christians and Christianity has endorsed. Early Sunday morning, got a, got a game, got the game on. I fell in love with every girl I came on. I know it ain't right. But it ain't wrong. If I lied about it, this world, this would be a lame song. I'm half love, I'm half lust. But I'm all me, and I never give a mad. You know the rhyme. Shout out, shout out to all the homies with bad luck. Woke up in the morning all alone. I know that sucks. But today is a new day. Put on some Axe body spray and some new J's. Do what you have to do to get laid. And bring her back to the house, Victor Duplay. Whatever you say about yourself is what counts. And if that ain't got no good vibes, tell them bounce. You can be anything you dream about and blow kisses to your haters when you see them out. Here's the chorus. Here's the chorus. Love money, music, and my mama. Stay away from douchebags and the drama. Need a check with at least three commas. Give me P and some pizza and there won't be no problems. That is, that is the chorus. Verse 2 says, I'm on top of the world eating donuts. I'm an MFing cheat day, so what? I seen a girl in yoga pants with no butt. Rappers getting money, but they can't seem to grow up. Come on, guys, play with the big kids. I give a F about the way you whip bricks. I'm a humble dude with a big male appendage. And for five years married to a thick chick. But you can, you can still send me news. For when I'm bored and ain't got S to do, I love to rap is what I mean to do. I love my job, but I hate doing interviews. I'm luckier than most, but not as much as some. And since I moved up out the hood, I don't F with guns. Live in the burbs, I wake up and run. See the world, but remember where the F you from. And then the chorus proceeds again. Now, I'm just asking the question biblically, how does this... How does this line up with biblical Christianity regarding collaborations with the wicked? Does not 1 Corinthians 15, 33 tell us clearly, clearly that bad company corrupts good character? Does not the Bible tell us clearly in Proverbs 13, chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse 20? He who walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools suffer harm. Now, he has another song called PTSD. Same album. This artist, Mr. Murs, he features, guess what? Everybody loves this artist. 
E40. Y'all remember E40, right? Y'all remember E40? E40 was the one who rapped on on Lecrae's album, Church Close 3. Yeah, big up to Lecrae. Thanks, Lecrae. Thanks for helping the church become more wicked than what it is. Bravo. Bravo. Encore. Encore, Lecrae. Encore. Here is the song called PTSD. Post-traumatic stress, PTSD. If you're from the hood, then you just like me. Niggas kicking your door for a PS3. How the F do you expect me to be stress-free? Homeboy asked me if I've been to the surface. Standing on stage, taking flicks got me nervous. All up in my face when I'm trying to be working. Sit your fat A down behind that curtain. B, I'm from the land of the bloods and the crypts. Niggas kill niggas just to F A B. You can lose your life for that Buster S. By the time I was nine, see that S. Lost more homies on that, uh, than an Iraq vet. Niggas skipping on groceries to buy a tech. Lost a few friends to a rival set. And I'm still trying to process them side effects. Extra clips, extra clips. I see them niggas now when I'm trip. Gang banging, party time, excellent. Not giving a F is a prerequisite. My testament is so trill, for the representative is so real. My residence got evidence, I'm a legend. Pills to the crack game, steals in the rap game. Every nigga rapping trying to fill up that lane. Back to the backstage, punk for a photo, catch that fade. F your badge, now you want to ask me why I'm so mad? Get your A beat for a photograph. Get the F out of my dressing room before I go bad. Homies laugh, I keep it moving. Then they gonna learn that there's more to music. I do this S so I can feed my kids so they never have to know what a repo is. You really think that you know how my people live? You think you down because you know who Debo is? PTSD on my emo S. Deep down in my heart where the evil lives. Dope lyrics, isn't it not? Oh, but we're not done. One more bar. This is verse 2 starring E-40. Again, E-40 comes in to the, to the, to the studio in the booth with Mr. Murs. You know, the one who is on the new uh, album with Dream Junkies and also E-40 is on Lecrae's new album, Church Close 3. E-40 says, I ain't playing with a full deck. I've been going through a lot of S. Put holes into you like a hairnet. Emptying the clip. You picked the wrong nigga to F with and I ain't with that fake S. I don't play it. I'm on some real time. I ain't, I ain't time to be dealing with no phony A, B boys. My pocket and I stay with it. This is a rolly B. Nah, it ain't a false one. Used to push bricks, but now a nigga push blank. Cause G's on your head like a blank. Had a hood telling Brothel, celebrating and whatnot. Happy because he almost terrorizing the whole block. Breaking into your home, stealing everything they got. Nobody, nobody at this funeral, nobody cried a drop. Post-traumatic PSD. My people want to work. No J-O-B. These bees want to twerk. Shake your booty. They pay the college tuition. That's what they see on TV. My mommy and my daddy dropped the ball on them. They never were there when they call on them. The ways of the world. The worldly ways. We living in the last days. All the real rappers with a lot of S to say. The kids nowadays think they, they whack today. Because my favorite rapper doesn't sound like they. How the F you expect me to be stress free? I'm from the hood. Then you just like me. I'm done. I'm done. So no, I can't. I can't endorse. Can't endorse Dream Junkies because of the collaboration uh, with <laughs> with Murs. Can't even do it. Can't even do it. What 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 is the problem with the church today? <laughs> That's why I listen to Cool in the Game. <laughs> I mean, and you know what? I try to be as objective as I possibly can. Um, Canton Jones, I, I, I don't really listen to his music. I've heard a few songs. I, I, I don't know. Um, I know he's on Preachers of Atlanta. Again, this is sellout. These people, these people, these people are selling out because they love the world. And the Bible tells us clearly: if you love the world, then you don't love God. And if you don't love God, you're not a Christian. We all can have our moments, but it never should be a manner of life. Ever. Ever. So, I'm just giving you guys scripture. 
And anyone who wants to challenge what I'm saying, bring book, chapter, and verse. How, how do you have a person who raps like this? Did you see the YouTube video that I put up with Merv's? Um, and, and, and also with, uh, uh, what's the dude? Take Nine. Did you see the Take Nine video I put up this morning? This dude was demon possessed. I don't care what y'all say. This dude was demon possessed. First he asked, first they asked him to, to, uh, to do a freestyle. He says, well, can I cuss? Can I, can I curse if I do one? This is what they asked, take nine. He goes in, cusses and all that kind of stuff. But before he did that, he's talking about he's a Christian and gives works righteousness. Well, I, I go to church, my church is this, we do this and all this other kind of stuff. But you're not saved though. You're not saved. You're not a Christian, bruh. In any sense of the imagination. Him or Murs. And you would think that Christians, and, I, and I, I, told, I told a brother this this morning, I said, I said, you know what? Immaturity and popularity are a dangerous combination. Immaturity, people who have no maturity to know that what responsibility that they have 